Hi, guys. I really appreciate you um, joining me this morning. Uh, let's pray. Father, I praise you and worship you, God. Just be with us in a mark and special way today, God, Lord Jesus. Speak to us. Speak to me. Speak through me. Minister minister as I'm ministering. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey guys, I was thinking about last week's sermon called Talk It Out. And I was thinking that although last week's sermon was good, I um, I left out the whole um, God part of it. I talked about, um, for those of you who didn't see last week's sermon, I talked about uh, this podcast I was watching called Name Drop and um, a Backstreet Backstreet Boys, AJ AJ McLean, 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 and Instincts, Chris Kirkpatrick, were talking about everything that went down. If you want to know what I said last week, you can go back and watch the video. It will be located somewhere um, below this video. And I talked about how if if we would would get together and hear outside of the story, it would be so much better. And if we would get together and just uh, talk it, talk situations out, and be honest with each other and stop blaming each other and throwing daggers at each other and listening to be right instead of listening to understand, we would be much be- better off as a world. Um, you could go back and watch it. It's, it's really good. So, But as I was um, ruminating on last week's sermon, um, I begin to began to think about not only do don't we uh, talk it out with each other as human beings and have misunderstandings as human beings, but we tend to do the same thing with God. Um, we tend to hold things inside when we need to just. Talk it out with God. When we just need to let it go. And I'm not saying just when you need help. Um, He's definitely a very present help in time of trouble. But I'm saying um, every day in the most mundane parts of your life whether you're getting your kids to school, whether you're listening to an audiobook, yay for audiobooks, whether you're watching Netflix, whether you're, you know, getting dinner ready for your family, whether you're deciding what job to take, what school to go to, whatever. He wants to be a part of all those aspects of your life. I think I think um, the the miss. I think Christianity has been so misunderstood and misrepresented um, to people. Um, I think um, most people outside of the church and sometimes inside of the church think that God is this. Uh, being who's just ready to bash you over the head and 
ready to judge you and really close-minded and stuff. But that's not the God I know. The God I know is so involved in life. He cares about everything. He He's concerned about everything you're concerned about. He's joyful about everything you're joyful over. He's he's angry about everything you're angry at. He wants to relate with you. Often when Christians say, oh, it's not about religion, it's about relationship, we don't explain we don't explain things. When we say it's not about religion, uh Religion to me is a group of practices like you have to practice, you have to, um, it is a group of you can't do this or you can do that, or you can't do this and you can do that. Um, God is, is not uh, like that. D- does he have standards, yes, but he's a father, so what good parent does not have rules or standards for their kids? But they're not as, um, they're not as stringent as we think they are, and I think because over the years and generations, we we as the church have misrepresented represented God so utterly and entirely. Sometimes I just want to shake my head and say, no wonder why, no wonder why people are turning away from God. I wouldn't want to serve a God like that. And plus, you have churches that are um, kind of like they bring the hammer hammer down and they talk about the judgment of God and whatever, and all that has its place. But really, in everyday life, God just wants to be a part of your world. Um, He just wants to be with you, sit with you, help you make decisions, talk with you about the most mundane kind of stuff. And I think what we need in the the church today is, is teaching on God relationship development. I think when I was toying with being a pastor, um, when I was toying with starting starting a church and being a pastor, my number my number one goal, other than um, sharing the love of Jesus with people, whatever, is teaching people how to uh, think for themselves and how to have their own relationship with God, how to hear the voice of God, how to study the word in the way that they can study the word, and how they can, you know, have lives where God's just, just not in a long ago book on the page. And that book is relevant today, but he can speak to your cir- circumstance now, and he totally wants to minister to you. When I'm saying uh, I was talking to God and he told me this or he told me that, you're, you're probably thinking, wow, what a wonderful thing to be able to hear God. And yes, it is a wonderful thing, but every person can experience that. Not in the same way, because everybody's different. So, but 
God, relationship development, I think it's key to life. I think it's, I think it's key to having a purpose-driven life, a God-driven life, like a, a family-driven life, a church-driven life. And I think what the problem is, is we have made God so inaccessible to people. We've made it, we do all this Christian jargon, and I'm sorry about that. We we use words like salvation and all that stuff, and all, all that means is coming to the realization that we all that we all need Christ and it's it's just a richer it's just a, a relationship that is so lovely and, and just so meaningful and for me relation relationship development started uh, when I was really young, I remember, <laughs> I remember sitting in my room. Um, my father is a pastor, but beyond that, um, I remember relation, relationship development started really young. When I started to talk to God about what was going on in my life, I would, I would talk to God about everything from, you know, if I had a disagreement with a friend or if I had an idea, a creative idea, um, I remember having that, that take on God from really young. And because I can't hold a book, um, God began, began to speak to me audibly out loud because of the person I was. He knew I couldn't hold the book and he knew I was an audio learner. So um, he would speak to me even as a child because I was very, very open to him speaking to me as a child. And um, I went through a lot in my family and my life and um, and through it all, he's been there, and through all the re relationships and people that have come and go, uh, our relationship has been stronger than ever, and, and it was just, uh, it just, I just needed to develop that relationship. And you know the thing with God is he'll develop his relationship in, with you in a way that you can do it. Um, like if you have, let's say, three kids and can't spend, you know, two hours a day, whatever, He'll train you, okay, if it can be two hours, maybe 20 minutes. Maybe he will speak to you about your, about your son and his, what, and whatever problem he's having while you're doing laundry and, you know, whatever, in whatever way he will speak to you. So the first step, I think in getting a relationship with God is just asking for it. Um, Lord, I want a relationship with you. Uh, come into my life, come into my heart. And that's basically what we mean by salvation. It's basically inviting Christ into the nitty gritty days of your life. And allowing him to speak through those days. And after that, um, developing, um, developing um, uh, a what I call a rhythm with God, 
meaning the getting to know how he speaks to you when you know that he's speaking and when you know that it's God. When I when I was growing up, I was told, okay, just look in the Bible and whatever. And if it's in the Bible, you know, he's speaking to you. But for me, I couldn't do that. I couldn't hold a book because of my disability. And even when I listen to an audio book, I can't do verses. So I can't study the Bible physically the way other people do. So what he did with me is develop because of my needs and because of who I was, he he would speak to me in my love for music and in my, you know, in my love for, you know, music and movies and all that stuff. So that's why I use a lot of um, uh, music references and movie references and all of that when I'm preaching because that's the way he speaks to me. And I can't can't tell you uh, the amount of times where I've been just going about my business and a song would come on the come on my YouTube or a song that I would be listening to and a line or something would stick in my head and I would and I would hear him say in my spirit speak on this next week or you know I want you to speak speak on this next week or I I need you to go over there to that person and and just speak this word and it is just the most amazing thing ever um it's like God is like the ultimate partner I think I'm going to change this uh, sermon title to talk from Talk It Up Part 2 to The Ultimate Partner because that's where what God is. And it's so funny now that he's developed a sense in me that like, oh, something is wrong. So what I get hit on on Facebook quite a lot. And he develops this sense in me now. uh, Don't add that friend. Or, you know, don't add that person. Or, yes, speak to that person. Or delete that person. It's, It's just a sense in me. And it's not an audible voice all the time, but it's a intuition that he's put in me, a very strong spiritual intuition because of years of just working on that relationship and holding how he speaks to me. And um the Lord will often speak to you uh, through what you love. So if you love painting, he will speak to you through painting. If you love sports and all of that, he will speak to you through sports. If you love, if you like, uh, you know, whatever you're into, he will often use that to speak to you, or use analogies from that to speak to you. If you look at the written word of God, the Bible, he used a lot, both God and his son Jesus used a lot of agricultural things to speak, and a lot of things that 
the people in the second in in uh, second temple Judaism would like would uh, understand when when I say second temple, I just mean in the time where the second temple was built. It's the time after the exile where the Jews came back and it was the time where Jesus lived. That's what I mean. So he used all of these analogies that the people back then would understand because through the end of the time, he wanted to be relevant and he wanted to be, you know, he wanted to be understood. He he loved telling stories. He loved using things, uh, using earthly earthly means to describe heavenly principles. So, so the Lord will use anything to to speak to you. So a lot of people say, oh, I'm not, I'm not spiritual or whatever. I'm not like, like that person. Well, you don't have to be, you just have to be you. And, and, um, you could ask God, show me how you speak to me. Show me the ways that you speak to me. Show me our individual rhythm. I think a lot of people, a lot of people don't understand uh, how to tap into their individual rhythm when it comes to Christ and when it comes to the relationship with Christ so that they're like, I need a word from God. I need a word from God. I need a word from God. Well, God's giving you several other words, but you just don't know how to tap into it. So just ask him, Lord, how do you speak to me? And if, like, what I would say is, ask the Lord to speak to you in a, in a really specific way and record in some way, either on your phone or in a notebook, if you're, if you're a note taker, what he said to you, how he said it to you, and that will hone your ability to know when God's speaking to you because God speaks to you on a level that you can understand. So your pastors don't have any special formula or whatever. I don't have any special, like this, this special key that God can speak to me because I went to Bible college. Uh, or whatever, or your pastor went to Bible college, so he has this special uh, key, and he knows more, and he just uh, he just has some secret sauce that I can't have. That that is not true. Anyone can hear from God. Anyone can speak to God. You just have to understand your rhythm and how he speaks to you, you know. And I always said this. I I always said, uh, if I were to be a pastor um, of a formal church, formal ministry, my job is to, is to, train the people so well how to hone God's voice in their own life, how to, how to, um, how to respond 
to God's voice in their own life so well that they won't need me. And when you understand the key to God's voice in your own life, it will change everything because you'll you'll know the key as to when he's speaking to you, uh, when it's you, when you'll you'll feel free to ask him questions just like it it'll just bring a freedom to you and when you get together and worship on sunday you won't be looking for a word from god it will be a way to get together with like-minded people and worship together and and if god is speaking to me and god is speaking to you could you ima- imagine what worship, t- worship, uh, corporate worship would be like? Oh my gosh, it would be so powerful because the the work would be done. So, because I think part of the problem is with corporate worship, because we don't know how to teach people to hone into how God speaks to them. Um, to hone into, uh, to develop their own rhythm of relationship with God. We're, we're stuck as pastors, not stuck, but we find ourselves as pastors and leaders, uh, just speaking to people every week and trying to give them keys and whatever to their lives, but the only key that we need to give them is to how to find the the uh the rhythm of God in their own life how to know how to develop that relationship with God if we teach people how to develop their relationship with God they will develop the voice of God, the actions of God in their life, they, they will know when God is speaking, they will know when they're being disobedient, they'll know how to come to God in prayer about everything. And we as pastors and leaders won't have jobs anymore. We'll just, you know, be there for guidance. And And he wants that relationship with you. He wants to speak in every aspect of your life. He wants you to be successful. He wants you to to develop um, your own speech with him. And he'll, he'll always speak to you on the level that you can understand. You may not agree, you won't agree with everything he says. You'll have to fight through some things and he'll make you confront some things that are are for your betterment, but he'll always speak to you on a level that you can understand. And what you hear on Sunday uh, or on Saturday, whatever time you gather with other believers will just be the sauce on a wonderful barbecue, on a wonderful steak. It won't be the steak, because the steak will be what you've been having through the week, and and the word that you've been that you got from from your pastor will just be additive. It's like you you've been eating ice cream all through the week, this wonderful chocolate and vanilla ice cream. And your pastor comes with the word and drizzles the sauce on the, um, uh, the, the, uh, the icing, not icing, on 
and sprinkles on that on that Sunday to make it even better. So you're not you're not getting the ice cream on Sunday. The Sunday the syrup is adding to your ice cream. It's not the pastor is not giving you ice cream or giving you that steak. They're just uh, they're just putting the finishing touches on it. And I think when you understand that uh, communicating with God is not spooky, it's not. It's not like he's not up to get you. He loves you. And when you get into a rhythm of how he communicates with you, he uses that mode of communication throughout your life. Whether it, whether it, it comes to um, uh, your romantic relationships, your friendships, your whatever. And when you hit trouble, when you hit trouble in your life, because everybody will hit trouble. That relationship with God will navigate you through everything. Your rhythm with God, it will navigate you through everything in your life. Whether you go through a lot or whether you go through a little, it will navigate you through your life. And he desperately wants those relation wants that relationship with you. And all you need to say is whatever whatever is inside your spirit, just say that and be honest with him. He so wants to help you. But honesty will will be the more than best policy. The reason I don't do what they call sinner's prayers, and that's basically when pastors say, pray after me, is because I believe at that moment, God wants you to speak to him about you, whatever you're going through, whatever you're feeling, whatever you are dealing with. He wants you to come to him with your words and say whatever you want to say is something like, God, I need you. So I don't, I don't, uh, I I don't uh, do this in spirit because he doesn't want to hear my words or some recycled prayer. He wants you to speak to him for you. So he wants you to discern his voice in your life for you. And so that's what he wants today. And he wants you to talk it out. You've been holding so much in. And he wants you to know that I am with you. I am waiting to hear from you about this. I am waiting uh, to develop to to show you how I how I speak to you. I'm waiting to develop a relationship with you. So let's develop this relationship together. Ask me, ask me how I speak to you. And oh, it's just a wonderful thing because it it helps throughout every area and aspect of your life. And it helps you realize that that no person has a, a magic key that you don't have. God is no respecter of person. He doesn't care if you're black, if you're white, if you're a man, if you're a woman, if you're, if you're, um, he doesn't care who you are. He just wants you to know he's here for you and he wants a personal relationship with you. And not only a personal relationship with you, 
but he wants to develop your relationship. And the relationship with God will develop at a different pace than other people. And the way he speaks to you will not be the way he speaks to me. So um, don't don't turn on music thinking that he'll speak to you because that's the way he speaks to me. No, he speaks to you on the level where you are. He uses to speak what you understand. And he will pull out principles on things to to make you understand them because he wants to be real to you. He wants to infiltrate every area of your life. He wants to make better every area of your life. He wa- he wants to teach you about storms. He wants to teach you that he's there. He wants to teach you everything about you. And a relationship with God will help you understand who you are, how you work, not only in relationship with him, but in relationship with other people. And he will reveal who everybody is in your life if you just ask him. If you have that relationship with him, he will reveal to you how to talk to your family members, how to deal with disputes, how to, he will give you revelation on certain situations. And a lot of people say, just um, just ask the Lord in prayer and whatever. But we don't teach you about relationship development. You have to develop that relationship first so that you feel comfortable to ask God anything in prayer. Like a relationship with God with a person, you can't you can't um, go go up to a person and ask the most personal question because they don't know you. They'll probably slap you in the face or look at you weird at the least. But if you develop that relationship, develop that trust, it makes it easier. A lot of people are afraid of God because they don't have a relationship with him. Like, they have, they they pray uh, two times a day and think that that's a relationship with God. No, a real um, brass taxes down to earth relationship with God requires time, it it requires a relationship development, it requires figuring it out, it requires uh, mistakes, and you will, and you will make mistakes in relationship with God. You will think something is God and come to find out it was just you. It's all a part of the learning game. But I'm telling you, before you look for a man and woman partner, get to know, get in rhythm with who I'm calling the ultimate pa- partner, Jesus Christ. He's waiting to hear from you. He wants to be in relationship with you today. He wants it right now. Thank you, God, for teaching us about the relationship with you that that you want to have with us. I praise you and I give you and I give you the, the ultimate glory and the ultimate praise. God, I pray that someone today will get into relationship with you. Amen. And it's impo- it's possible to to um I have said the sinner's prayer, 
but not be in relationship with God. He, he wants to be in relationship with you. He doesn't just want to be distant. He wants to be up close with you. And he wants you to talk it out with him. He wants you to talk it out with him. We're, we're saying to uh, take it to the Lord in prayer. We're saying to have a relationship with God without talking about relational development. The first thing we need to do is have a relationship with uh, um, figure out relationship development when it comes to God. And like when I say relationship development, I mean how he speaks to you, how he how he um, how he prompts you. Because he will prompt you in different ways. Uh, Whether you're at at the grocery store doing laundry or whatever you're doing, he will, in a board meeting, and he will give you revelation. But all of that stuff doesn't come without without relational development. And relational development takes time. And he just wants you to know that he loves you. And he's ready to take the time with you. He's ready to go at your pace. He's ready to love you through it. He's ready to teach you. He's he's ready to uh, give his revelation to you. And it makes life so much richer, so much brighter. So when the dark days come, you have a partner to go through life with. And he's the best at at, um, choosing romantic partners. And that part is different for everybody. Uh, There is no magic way to hear God or whatever. To hear God or to speak to God. There's no magic way to do it. You could you could get books and books about how to pray or whatever. All all those are most of those are ba- are valid because they work for that person. And it may work for um some other people. But it's not valid for, it's not possible for everybody. So, but what I would say is you need to develop your own relationship with God. When you develop your own relationship with God, you won't need this book or that book or whatever but you, you will need the Bible. But even there, you'll know how to interpret the Bible with your own, to, do, to enhance your own relationship with whoever you're, you're dealing with, whether it's God or whether it's with your family members. Relational development will help in every area of your life. And relational development is a process. And some days you'll get it wrong and some days you'll get it right. But then then you'll grow and you'll realize that, oh my gosh, I'm growing. And it will be awesome. So guys, thank you so much today for being with me. I really, really appreciate it. Bye. I need to talk to you and ask you for your guidance, especially today. Forever, I'll be fine. Only until I'm
And I have one last thing to say. There is somebody out there whose heart has been broken by the church or whatever. Um, God will God will break your heart intentionally, beloved. People broke your heart. God didn't break your heart. There's 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 one thing that God taught me in relational development. God taught me that he is different than people. He works through people, but people are fallible while he is perfect. Don't let what um, um, people did in the name of God or whatever taint your relationship with God. Take him on his own merit. Don't close your heart to this relational development that he wants to give you this this gift of relationship that he wants to give you. Thank you guys for joining me today. Bye. This video will be called The Ultimate Partner.